Dear students, after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the significance of cardiac poisons, the classification of cardiac poisons and the forensic importance of cardiac poisons. First, introduction and forensic issues of cardiac poisons. Cardiac poisons have mainly actions on the heart, either directly or the musculature or through its nerve supply. These poisons generally produce deleterious effect on the action of the heart due to poisoning of the cardiac muscle or its conducting system. Mostly the cases reported before a forensic laboratory related to cardiac poisons are due to accidental poisoning by plants containing certain compounds such as glycosides or alkaloids which are poisonous in nature and effect. In this line, the best known cardioactive glycoside is Digitalis purpura, also known as foxglove. However, others exist in the lily family, such as squill, scleron, and lily of the valley, which contains, which contains convella toxin in the bulbs that have actions similar to digitalis. Also, milkweeds contain glycosides. The cardiac glycoside desglucoserin in Asclepias spirula, like digitalis, inhibits sodium potassium ATPase. Two plants in the Epocynaceae also contain cardioactive glycosides. Apart from the plant borne poisons, certain chemical compositions are also responsible for deaths due to cardiac abnormalities. Such chemicals may be involved in medical practice. Example, medicines related to blood pressure and other cardiac irregularities. Most cases of anti-hypertensive drug overdose are accidental, for example, in children, or suicidal. Pediatric poisoning arises out of parental negligence, rendering these and other dangerous pharmaceutical preparations easily accessible to toddlers. Tragically, deaths have occurred in some cases. Among the various anti-hypertensives, the beta blockers have frequently been implicated in serious poisoning, with propanol being the commonest agent implicated. Reserpine increases suicidal tendency among patients. Extended or sustained released antihypertensives are generally associated with prolonged and more profound effects in overdose. Similarly, use of diuretics may disbalance the osmoregulation of the body system, which may ultimately affect the cardiovascular functioning. There are certain drugs which are although taken for the treatment of cardiac dysfunctioning, but they may affect adversely, which could be lethal. Next is classification of cardiac poisons. First is cardiotoxic plant poisons. In this first is nicotiana tobaccum, that is tobacco. Nicotine is a colorless hygroscopic liquid alkaloid. Preparations of nicotine are extensively used in agriculture and horticulture for fumigating and spraying as insecticides, fumigants, vermin paste, warm powder, sheep dip, etc. The dried leaves of the plant Solanaceae comprise of the tobacco used for smoking. These leaves of tobacco, tambaku, contain 1 to 8 percent of nicotine and are used in the form of smoking, snuff, and for chewing. They are used for the preparation of cigars, cigarettes, beeries, and powdered tobacco is used as a snuff. The tobacco is also consumed by mixing with lime alone, that is cani, or with lime and beetle. Nicotiana species contains nic nicotine, nor nicotine, anabasine, and anabetine as alkaloids. By far, the commonest source of nicotine poisoning, whether acute or chronic, results from smoking tobacco in the form of cigarettes. When a cigarette is lit and inhaled, the smoker is exposed to both gaseous and particulate matter. 
nicotine is very toxic and exists in all parts of the plant in combination with malic acid and citric acid. Poisoning is usually accidental, resulting from excessive smoking or application of leaves or juice to the wound or abraded surface may lead to the absorption of the poison. Suicidal and homicidal poisoning is rare. Concentrated liquid nicotine is exceedingly dangerous. However, tobacco is much less poisonous than would be expected from its nicotine content when smoked. Nicotine poisoning can occur from ingestion or application over skin and by inhalation. Nicotine binds to nicotinic receptors which are present mainly on the central nervous system, spinal cord and neuromuscular junctions. It also binds to autonomic nervous system and adrenal medulla. It first stimulates the vagus nerve and then depresses the autonomic central and spinal nervous system. In small doses, it contracts pupil, but in larger doses, it causes dilation. Cardiovascular manifestations include slow pulse at first and then rapid. Blood pressure is raised and arrhythmias also develop. Death occurs due to respiratory failure. The fatal dose is 60 to 100 mg of nicotine and 15 to 30 grams of crude tobacco whereas the fatal period is 5 to 15 minutes. Second is digitalist purpurea. Digitalis purpurea or commonly known as foxglove is cultivated in whole of Jammu and Kashmir of India and all over the world. The entire plant of digitalist purpurea is toxic. Only leaves are used for medicinal purposes. The active principles in the form of glycosides are present in the leaves, roots and seeds of the plant. There are about more than 30 glycosides out of which only four are important. Of this, digitalin, digitoxin and didoxin are cardiac stimulants whereas digitonin is cardiac depressant. The poisoning by digitalis is mostly accidental as it is used in different types of cardiac diseases and overdoses do occur. Poisoning occurs due to intake of overdose of medicinal preparation accidentally but also it is sometimes used for homicidal purposes. Digitalis being a cumulative poison accidental death may occur in susceptible individuals. The chief action of the poison is on the heart due to its glycosides content. In the heart, it prolongs the period of systole in cardiac cycle, regulates the rhythm of the heart by depressing both excitability and conductivity, shortens the period of diastole and cause rise of blood pressure. In toxic doses, there is increased impulsiveness of the heart. Toxic arrhythmias and bradycardia develops leading to heart failure. The poison first acts on the gastrointestinal tract, then the cardiovascular system. Next is aconite. Commonly aconite is known as mitha bish, mitha zeher, bik or monk's hood, blue rocket and bear's foot. The plant aconite is grown in garden for its attractive flowers in the Himalayan range in India. Aconitum napellus belongs to the family Renanculaceae. All parts of nearly all the varieties of the plant are poisonous, but the root is chiefly used as poison. There are several species of aconite out of which Aconitum ferox and Aconitum napellus are commonly used as poison. It has no odor, but is sweetish in taste, hence the name Mita Bish. On chewing, tingling and numbness in the tongue, lips and mouth is felt. Aconite species contain diterpene and norditerpene alkaloids and the nitrogen molecule of which is usually ethylated or methylated to make them elk amines. Diterpenes are relatively low in toxicity, but the esterified non-diterpene bases have high toxicity. 
Indian species contain hypoaconitine and mesoaconitine, which are less potent. The poison first stimulates the sensory nerve endings, producing tingling sensation, then polarizing them, causing numbness. It produces similar effect on the motor and secretory nerve endings, the centers of the medulla and cord, while the higher centers are always left out. The alkaloids depress the myocardium, smooth muscles and skeletal muscles. Its depressant effect on motor ganglia and cardiac muscles produces heart block. As aconite is largely used as medicine, accidental poisoning is common. It is also given with betel leaf to mask its taste and sometimes added with liquor to increase its intoxicating effect. It is used as arrow poison in hilly areas. Next is Nerium odorum. The plant grows widely all over the country. It is also grown in the gardens for its beautiful pink and white flowers. All parts of the plant are poisonous. Powdered roots are used for the treatment of venereal diseases. Epilepsy, malaria, skin diseases and menstrual disorders by the quacks. The powdered roots are also applied as paste to treat ulcerations and cancerous growths. Decoction of the leaves may be applied to reduce swelling of the body. The known active principles are nirin, oleandrin and carabin. The fatal dose for powdered root is 15 to 20 gram, whereas for neriodorin and carabin it is 150 milligrams. The signs and symptoms of nerium poisoning includes slow pulse rate, which becomes weak and feeble in late stages, fall of blood pressure and cardiac arrhythmias. Exhaustion and drowsiness leads to insensibility, collapse and coma. Death occurs from heart failure. Next is Cerbera thevitia. The plant is also known by the names of bastard oleander. Pila Kaner, etc. Similar to Nerium odoram. Cerebra is widely cultivated in gardens in India. All parts of the plant are highly poisonous. The powdered bark of the plant may be used as an antipyretic like Sanchona in the dose of 125 milligrams but in little bigger dose. It acts as an emetic and purgative and in further bigger dose it is poisonous. The milky juice from nearly all parts of the plant gives out the active principles which are cardiac glycosides of these thevitin and thevitoxin can be recovered from the kernels of seeds. Cerberin, another alkaloid, is a neurotoxic and acts in a similar manner as of strychnine. Thevitin is a powerful cardiac toxin. The action of thevitoxin and nerifolin is similar to digitalis. Thevitin contained in the acid ether extract obtained by subjecting the viscera of suspected yellow oleander poisoning to Stas Otto procedure can be recognized by Keller's test. Accidental poisoning of cerebra can occur from ingestion of powdered root or decoction for treatment and common in children. The powdered roots, decoction of leaves or paste of the fruit may be ingested for committing suicide. It is not used for homicidal purpose, but commonly used as cattle poison that is given mixed with the cattle fodder. The paste is commonly smeared on the abortion stick to be used as an abortifacient. The powdered root or seeds are taken after mixing with food or drink to cause abortion. Next is Cerbera odalum. This plant closely resembles the Cerebra thevitia that grows wild in the swamps and creeks of the sea coasts of India. The plant has a dark, fleshy, lanceolate leaves similar to jasmine and the fruit resembles unripe mango. Milky juice exudes out from all parts of the plant. The kernels yield non poisonous oil that is used for burning. The kernel contains a glycoside cerebrin, an alkaloid cerebroside that has digitalis-like action. Usually in poisoning cases, 
death results from heart failure. Next is hydrocyanic acid. Hydrocyanic acid is a vegetable acid that is widely distributed in nature in many fruits and leaves. Here it exists in the form of harmless glucoside known as amygdalin, which coexists with the enzyme emulsion in the kernels of various fruits such as peaches, plums, apricots, bitter almonds, bamboo shoots, certain oil seeds and beans, and leaves of cherry laurel and bitter almonds. The emulsion can readily hydrolyze amygdalin in presence of water to form hydrocyanic acid, glucose and benzaldehyde. It is present in the leaves of cherry laurel in the strength of 0.08 to 0.1% and 10% in oil of bitter almonds. Several people suffer from the effects of hydrocyanic acid poisoning after eating some of bitter almonds. Liquid hydrocyanic acid when pure is a highly volatile colorless liquid having a peculiar odor of bitter almonds or peach kernels. The hydrocyanic acid is usually obtained by distilling potassium cyanide or potassium ferrocyanide with dilute sulfuric acid. Hydrocyanic acid is decomposed in neutral or alkaline solution with formation of ammonia. Next is diuretics. Diuretics are the drugs that increase the rate of urine formation. In general, the diuretics act directly on the kidney tubules to yield the desired clinical effects. Clinically, diuretics are used to control hypertension, to reduce edema, and as an adjunct in treating congestive heart failure. Despite the widespread use of diuretics in medical practice, acute overdoses involving these agents are fortunately quite rare. Most reported cases of toxicity are actually related to chronic use. Long-term diuretic use to treat hypertension has recently been associated with the development of type 2 diabetes. Cardiovascular abnormalities include bradycardia, conduction defects, sinus arrest and hypotension. Cardiovascular symptoms have only been reported after chronic therapy and not from an acute ingestion. Next are antihypertensives. Antihypertensives are a class of drugs that are used to treat hypertension or commonly known as high blood pressure. First is reserpine. Reserpine, an alkaloid present in the root of the Indian plant, Rawolfia serpentina, has been used for treating hypertension for decades. Related alkaloids include L-serooxylon, deserpidine, raubesine, and resinamine. Reserpine is readily absorbed following oral and intramuscular dosing. Reserpine and its congeners reduce catecholamines and serotonin superficially and centrally from nerve terminal fibers. The resulting responses exhibit as central nervous system depression and peripheral sympatholysis. The adverse effects of reserpine include orthostatic hypotension, dizziness, blurred vision, bradycardia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and impotence. In addition, it often includes depression, overdose produce reflective central nervous depression. Victims may initially demonstrate hypotension and tachycardia for up to one day followed by hypotension and bradycardia. Next is Methyl dopa. Methyl dopa acts centrally through an active metabolite, alpha methyl noradrenaline, to lower blood pressure. It is an antihypertensive whose specific mechanism of action is uncertain. However, methyl dopa may induce life threatening effects such as hemolytic anemia, hepatitis, pancreatitis, and myocarditis. Apart from a myriad other 
lesser effects including headache, drowsiness, depression, edema, bradycardia, nasal stuffiness, nightmares, disorders of sexual function, gynecomastia, galactoria, dryness of mouth and nightmares. Acute overdosage of methyl dopa may result in severe hypothermia, dry mouth, nausea, vomiting, hypotension, dizziness, weakness, lethargy, coma and bradycardia. Parasthesis, headache, weakness, involuntary movements and psychic disturbances have been reported. Next is clonidine. Clonidine is an imidazoline compound with, with potent alpha-2 adrenergic agonist effects. At high doses, it has been shown to act as a peripheral partial alpha adrenergic receptor agonist, resulting in stimulation of the peripheral postsynaptic alpha-2 receptors, thus temporarily increasing blood pressure and pulse rate. Apart from its utility in hypertension, clonidine is also used in the treatment of attention deficit disorder. Prophylaxis of migraine and management of ethanol, opiate and nicotine withdrawal. Its adverse effects include dry mouth, drowsiness, orthostatic hypertension, insomnia, agitation, myalgia, arrhythmias and gastrointestinal distress. Abrupt withdrawal of clonidine can be life-threatening. Withdrawal effects include agitation, tremor, palpitations, insomnia, severe hypertension, nausea and vomiting. Even otherwise, rebound hypertension is common. Next is antiarrhythmics. The antiarrhythmic drugs are primarily used to treat cardiac arrhythmias. A cardiac arrhythmia is a disturbance or irregularity in the heart rate, rhythm or both, which requires administration of one of the antiarrhythmic drugs. An arrhythmia may occur as a result of heart disease or from a disorder that affects cardiovascular function. Conditions such as emotional stress, hypoxia and electrolyte imbalance also may trigger an arrhythmia. General adverse reactions common to most antiarrhythmic drugs include lightheadedness, weakness, hypotension, bradycardia and drowsiness. All antiarrhythmic drugs may cause new arrhythmias or worsen existing arrhythmias even though they are administered to resolve an existing arrhythmia. This phenomena is called the proarrhythmia effect. This effect ranges from an increase in frequency of premature ventricular contraction PVCs to the development of more severe ventricular tachycardia to ventricular fibrillation and may lead to death. First is procainamide. Procainamide is an antirhythmic agent with electrophysiological properties similar to that of quinidine. Its primary effects on the heart are to decrease electrical impulse conduction velocity through atrial and ventricular tissue. Overdose of procainamide results in arrhythmias. Next is lignocaine. Lignocaine is an amino acyl amide and a synthetic derivative of cocaine. It is used in controlling ventricular arrhythmias. Adverse effects includes vertigo, drowsiness, confusion, ataxia, hearing loss, visual disturbances, agitation, convulsions, cardiovascular collapse and coma. Next is phenoprene. Phenoprene or propafenone is an antirhythmic drug which blocks the fast sodium channel of the myocardial cell. It has some negative inotropic and beta adrenoceptor blocking activity. Propafenone is structurally related to propanol all and is administered orally for the treatment of life-threatening ventricular arrhythmias. 
adverse effects include bradycardia, cardiac conduction anomalies, hypotension, proarrhythmias, worsening of heart failure, vertigo and headache. We will conclude this module with summary. Common cardiotoxic plants include aconite, azalea, death kamas, false hellebore, foxglove, lily of the valley, meadow saffron, mountain laurel, common oleander, yellow oleander, rhododendron, suicide tree and yew. Several of the cardiotoxic plants contain various cardiac glycosides which act in a similar fashion. Some of these glycosides are useful in pharmacotherapeutics. Both digoxin and digitoxin are well absorbed orally. But while the former is only moderately protein bound, digitalis glycosides inhibit active transport of sodium ion and potassium ion across cell membranes by binding onto a specific site on the extra cytoplasmic face of the alpha subunit of sodium potassium ATPase. Poisoning with aconite has never been common. Most reported cases are accidental in nature, resulting from therapeutic misadventures. Accidental poisoning from nerium is due to its use in traditional medicine. Suicidal ingestion of decoction prepared from leaves or root is fairly common in rural areas. All the glycosides of nerium have a digoxin like effects as they also inhibit sodium potassium ATPase. Hydrocyanic acid is the liquefied form of hydrogen cyanide and is a bluish white liquid with a faint bitter almond odor. Overdose of antihypertensives like clonidine may result in bradycardia progressing to heart block, hypotension, hypothermia, central nervous system depression and sporadic aponia. Sometimes there is inconsistent hypertension. Clonidine poisoning is much more severe in children as compared to adults.